Hey everybody, welcome. Today I'm at the Fruit and Spice Park here in Redland, Florida, and I'm sitting underneath several beautiful, gigantic baobab trees. And I'm going to show you these trees and tell you a little bit about them. Hanging from the tree is one of the fruit of the baobab, and you can see it's got a long tail, and it just kind of hangs down like that from the tree. And people will call this, uh, sometimes they'll call this the rat tree because uh, this looks like rats hanging from the tree. So let's start with the biggest one. This one's, this one's pretty spectacular. Let me show you. And I'll, I'll walk around. Look at the size of that tree there. And by comparison, if you look at that bench over there, that's probably, what, a five and a half, six foot bench. And if you look at the trunk of the tree, that's easily 10, maybe even, eh, it's got to be at least 10 feet. Anyway. Let me back up. This goes way up. Way, 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 way up. Beautiful, beautiful tree. You can see people have carved into it, which is really not a good thing because you really disfigure the tree. But people do carve their names into the tree. And they also actually use these trees uh, to uh, create places to store water. Um, they actually have built small, little shelters inside these trees. Look at this tree. It's absolutely amazing. Look at that. It's huge. Anyway, we're going to move on here and I'll show you there's three more trees. Let's come back to a, let's come back to a normal a normal focus. You can see you've got two straight back in a line and then you've got three more right here on the right side. Now, I'll tell you something, this, these trees actually uh, were knocked down and were put back up. Now, these were knocked down several years ago. I believe when we had Hurricane, um, I can't remember exactly the name of the hurricane, but it was right around the time when Maria hit Puerto Rico. Uh, we had another hurricane that had come through here and these were down and this park team did a great job of getting these guys back up. And you can see now they look terrific. Now, the trees are full of leaves right now. And th these trees, you know, they're from a, a dry, dry conditions. But when the water comes, they absorb that water like a sponge and they have plenty of water to sustain them. So in their natural habitat in Africa and some places in Sahara, um, these trees will actually be completely defoliated. So they'll have absolutely, that means no leaves. And they're only gonna have leaves maybe like three months out of the year. But here in South Florida, it's a whole different ball game altogether. You're gonna have these trees do great here. Now, in the Redlands, what we have is coral rock. So you can see these are elevated. A little bit of a mound, if you'll notice, they're up on a mound. See that, they're all on a mound? Because it's really hard digging here. But uh, you've gotta blast through that rock and you gotta, you gotta auger into it and you gotta get down there and then, you know, you elevate a little bit, and that really, really makes the trees um, survive better because they don't, they don't want to sit in a place that's always wet. That is the end of the tree because after a while, you will develop root rot and all kinds of problems. Now, these trees also make terrific bonsais. So if you can get your hands on a small tree, or more commonly, you might find seeds, even though there are people, I sell the trees, uh, but getting seeds is difficult and, and I'll go over that with you in just a moment Because we're gonna go and I'll show you what the pod looks like um, Up close and inside the pod is where the seeds are, but there's also edible There's an edible kind of um, It's almost like a powder, you know, you know if you've ever eaten like when you're a kid you eat the uh, the What do they call that the ice cream uh, that is? Uh, a dehydrated dehydrated ice cream it's kind of like that texture inside, it's like a little powder, and uh, it has a kind of a citrusy flavor to it, and it's pretty good, and it's supposed to be very good medicinally. Now, the leaves of the tree are edible. Um, I've never tried them, but there are people that survive off this in Africa, and they actually use the leaves, they, 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 they cook them like, uh, as if you were cooking, like as if you were cooking spinach. So these leaves are supposed to be edible. Again. Don't eat them because I've never tried it and I don't know, maybe uh, maybe you're allergic to it or something. But do some research before you try to eat it. It is definitely a plant that is considered edible 
and these are the species Adansonia digitata. And digitata means digits, right? So like fingers, right? Because if you look up at the tree, look up at these trees, I know it's hard to agree maybe with what I'm about to say, but it's often referred to as the upside down tree. And the reason for that is when the tree is leafless, it looks like all those branches are the roots and the tree was put in the ground upside down. Let me see if you can see that concept a little better if I focus on this tree. So if you look at this tree here and imagine that tree with absolutely no leaves at all. Look how big that tree is. Right, that's the big one right there. So if that had no leaves on it, it looks like the branches are the roots and the tree was planted upside down. There you go. Now there's a lot of uh, mysterious things uh, that are attributed to the tree. Uh, things like uh, if you, uh, I forget how it goes, but like if you eat something from the tree or if you do something under the tree, I can't remember. I wish I would have remembered. But anyway, maybe you guys want to look that up and make a comment. Uh, something about a lion will eat you if you do something. <laughs> and uh, there's all kinds of like wives tales and fairy tales. It's a pretty fascinating tree. You really should do some research on this tree. It's, it's a lot of fun to even read about it. So it's an ancient tree. It's a food source. It's medicinal. And it has some interesting characteristics. Like for example, the bark of the tree is unique in that it actually heals itself. So all these people that have written their name on the tree, Little by little over time, um, those uh, damaging marks on the tree, like let's take a look at this one. I don't know if the lighting is good enough to see it, get a little closer. All that stuff that you see on the tree, eventually it's going to heal itself. And you can kind of see that because if you look up here, this heart that somebody carved in the tree, little by little, little by little it is healing itself. So this is amazing, amazing living creature that when someone does this to it, not only are they de defacing the tree, um, but they're causing the tree a little bit of stress. It has to go ahead and it has to repair itself. So you can see that the tree has those amazing properties. Now with that said, um, man will take this tree and chop a big hole in it. Actually, they'll build like, a, they'll carve out somewhere up at the top they'll carve out a large square go deep make a box and uh, they use that for storage you know they'll keep some food in there and things like that or they'll keep uh, water they'll use it for storing water in the tree now I'm not too familiar exactly how they do that uh, but they do do that now in one place it's a story that they had actually built in a tree, one of these baobabs that was huge. I can imagine it must have been 10 times the size of this tree. And there was a pub where you could go in there and you can get a drink. That's right. I'm not making that up, it's real. All right, so this is what, this is what a, a fruit looks like. Now, I can't open this. This is as hard as you can imagine. So I am not even gonna attempt to open this. But this is the fruit of the baobab. And notice that it, this one's kind of small, you know? And then sometimes you'll see different shapes. You'll see shapes that look like small footballs. You'll see shapes that are perfectly round, slightly oval. But everywhere I've been to Florida, and I've been to Hollywood, where they have these trees at Hollywood Young Circle, and I've been to uh, Fairchild Tropical Garden, and I've been to um, the Florida Fair up in West Palm Beach, where they have one of these trees. And I've been to uh, here, to this park, and I've never yet seen anything but this shape. They all seem to have this shape. So I don't know if that's a species thing with these varieties, since they're from South Florida. They may have come from the same original shipment of trees. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, but I do know that history tells us that in Hollywood, where the airport, Hollywood, I think it's called Hollywood Dania or something like that airport, that airport is uh, got a tree right down a couple blocks away from the airport uh, on US 1 in the middle of the street, in the medium. Right in the middle of the street there's a baobab tree. And one day I'll, uh, I'll go down there, hopefully won't get hit by traffic because it's tough to stop your car, okay, find a place to park 
which is impossible over there really, and then go up to the tree because you're literally in the middle of the street. So I don't think that video is coming anytime soon. But anyway, make a long story short, these trees here produce these fruits, which are hard as rocks. So I've tried to open them a couple of times and it took several days of letting them dry a little bit more and then banging them with a hammer. And guess what? The hammer bounces off. So I really don't have a really good practical way of opening these things, except to uh, put it on a vise and take a, a chainsaw and try to cut through it. Maybe we'll try that. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to say is that pollination of these trees uh, reportedly comes from bats. So we're talking about bats being the pollinators of the baobabs. So I can imagine that here in the park, we're in the middle of uh, the Everglades, so to speak. So we probably have our share of uh, native bats and uh, they probably like hanging around here and pollinating the flowers when the trees are in flower. So as I said earlier, they're, they're three months out of the year in their native habitat, they're going to be uh, deciduous. Uh, they won't have any leaves. But here in Florida, uh, there's a short period of time when they have no leaves. So actually, uh, I would say sometimes I see them go three, four months, but I've never seen more than that. The hot, warm, humid weather uh, keeps them lush the majority of the time. So eight to nine months out of the year, we have the opposite, where we actually have trees producing a lot of foliage, lots and lots of foliage. All right, everybody, I hope you uh, enjoyed that and uh, you'll come back uh, to the channel. Hope you subscribe and we'll see you again. Have a great one.